Hey, Pastor Sean here. We're on week four, part two of our series, Living Among You. Going through the book of First Thessalonians, we're on chapter four. Let's begin reading in verse one. Hopefully you have your Bibles open. Let's uh, start reading verse one. Finally, brothers, we instructed you how to live in order to please God. We talked about that in part one. How to live in order to please God, as in fact you are living. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. For you know that instructions we give you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. It is God's will you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality. It is God's will that you should be sanctified. If it's God's will, then it should also be our will. Anytime it's God's will, it should be our will to do the same thing. And sanctified. Sanctification is a process. But we hear the word sanctified, and sometimes it just seems like Christianese word. And, you know, we, we usually don't, don't hear the word used in modern vernacular. We don't use it in, in, you know, everyday terms, but the word sanctified is a biblical term, and it's, it's a good term. It's something that we should really learn to, to understand, and so I do want to talk about it for a minute. Sanctification is the process of holiness. Holiness means to be set apart for God's service, to be set apart to look more and more like Jesus Christ. It's dedication to God's plan and his purposes. It's a separation from all that is unclean. And we see here in the second part of verse 3 that you should avoid sexual immorality. In particular, he's telling the Thessalonians and throughout the Pauline uh, epistles, he particularly pinpoints sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is something that is an uh, important sin for the, the human body. Um, we like to say as Christians that, that all sins are equal before God. And in a sense, that's true. But sexual sin is something that, that is um, very, very vile because it is so incorporated in, in the human culture. Uh, particularly, we see it in our culture of today. You saw it in the culture of um, biblical times as well as times before biblical times and times um, should the Lord tarry after our times as well. Sexual immorality is huge. And so if we want to be holy, sexual immorality has to be uprooted in our lives. And so part of the sanctification process is we've got to remove sexual immorality in our lives. And it's hard for me as, as a man, as a human man, to, to say to you that it has to be removed and you not to think that I am completely spotless in this area as well. I am tempted just as you are. This is something that has reached every facet of all of our lives. We cannot go into the shopping, uh, in, into the, the checkout line in Publix without seeing sex being sold for every single thing, every single product. We cannot turn on our TVs without seeing sex being sold for everything, uh, toothpaste to deodorant to everything. Sexual immorality is in every aspect. And so if we are to be sanctified, sexual immorality is a huge aspect of that. He continues in verse 4, that each of you should learn to control his own body. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, in the uh, New American Standard Bible, it says, Marriage is to be held in honor among all, and the marriage bed is to be undefiled. For fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. 
sex is, is an amazing thing. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It was created by God to be enjoyable, to, to be uh, sought after, to, for the, the human body, the human mind, the human emotions to, to long for and to enjoy. It was something uh, given by God for us to enjoy, but only in marriage and for the marriage bed. And here and elsewhere in scripture, he forbids it outside of marriage. And here he says fornicators, that is anyone who is not married, and adulterers, those who are married, that God will judge if there is anything that is unclean. So in verse 4, he says, learn to control your body. We have to learn to do that. It's something that, that we have to put our minds to, something that, that we have to actually uh, to learn, to, to process, to, to read scripture, to, to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to do, to, to get others to help us to do, to even get counseling, perhaps. It, it's, it's a learned thing learned from from scripture learned from from god it's it's something that we have to control um part of the uh fruit of the holy spirit is self-control and so it's something that we have to do we have to control our own bodies and in a particular way too he says learn to control your bodies verse four in a way that is holy and honorable, holy, again, set apart for God's service, holy, um, something that is, that is not displeasing to God, something that is uh, not unclean, something that, that is clean before his sight, and honorable, honorable meaning knowing the price, knowing the, uh, the value of our bodies, knowing that that God, the Holy Spirit, lives in our bodies, that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That is the, the value that we have. So learn to control your body in a holy and honorable way, that it's set apart for God and that the Holy Spirit lives within us. That's the actual value that we have. And that, that's what he tells us to do, to live in such a way that is... That, that we can uh, control our bodies in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the heathen do, who do not know God. When, when we cannot control our body, that's what those, do, those people do that don't know God. When we're not able to control our bodies, when we're not able to control our lusts, it is an indication that we don't, know God. I don't mean don't know him at all, but it's konosko, the word konosko, that we don't truly know God, that we don't have an intimacy with God. And instead, we're seeking an intimacy with someone else or another idea of someone else, another intimacy with someone or something else other than God. We're seeking intimacy sexually with someone else rather than with an intimacy with our savior with with our lord and he is forbidding that that is unclean verse six and that in this matter no one should wrong his brother or take advantage of him the lord will punish men for all such sins as we already told you and warned you Sexual immorality will always transgress proper limits in disregard of the rights of others. So in like premarital sex, when we have premarital sex with, with someone else, it takes away another person's virginity, uh, whether it's the first time or, or even multiple times. That's physically or emotionally or uh, spiritually, obviously. Uh, in, in adultery, that takes away another man's or, or woman's rights to who they are married to. In uh, homosexuality, that takes away 
the the right of the the God given way that, that God has created man and, and woman in, uh, in in all sexual sin, particularly when there's children involved or or uh, friends and, and family, it sins against those that, that are involved in every situation that sexual sin is involved, it harms other people. That when sexual immorality is involved, there's transgression, not just the two individuals that are involved in the, the act itself, but all of the collateral damage as well. Sexual sin is, is not just a deviancy with the person involved, but all of those that it's spiders, like a spider web all around. God hates these kind of things because of the damage that it does. And we don't even realize these things because we tend to burn with passion. And the Lord hates these things. And so the Apostle Paul tells the Thessalonians that in order to walk with the Lord, in order to continue to do the things that they are already indeed doing, and for us that are also reading this, for us to continue to walk with the Lord more and more, we have to be clean. We have to walk in, in spiritual and sexual purity. We have to do these things. We have to get them right. Just wanted you to know that we will not have a part three this week for our mini bites. We will have a guest speaker on Sunday. His name is Oscar Frias. Hopefully you can join us live at the Church at Whistling Pines. If not, he will be on uh, Facebook and live stream. We will be coming back for parts one, two, and three of Mini Bites next week um, as normal. And part one will drop on Wednesday. See you then.